Yeah, 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 we good. Say what the fuck you want to say. Let's show. Yeah, 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 yeah. Bang, glory, it's bang, God. Knowledge born. Yeah. United Front. Tell it. What you want, what you want, what you want. To the Knowledge Radio. We in here. What you got? Dot. Work hard as a slave to one day be your savior The wave Ooh. unwavering This is a labor of love Rise with a purpose every day Invigorated If we were on TV we'd be ten times syndicated If we waited for validation of paycheck or accolades We'd be starved, already lost or ran away But when you're square solid in your circle too You don't need a place for silence The concept is conquered through Media, not areas of people activity A mix that don't lose ethnicity Tightness that don't lose elasticity Explicitly, this isn't where we give the novice regard. Nah, this is where knowledge is born. Last time that I checked, I'm undefeated. The liver edicts can't resist when the gods build and manifest freedom. When lines get crossed, they may push a loss because they get handed the check. We kick the can and cancel. You can't see gestures. A prophet vision, precision, the prescription for the sickness is to inoculate your fate with the winning. Arrogant beginnings turn to humble endings. And you with KBA is a win-win. 1K, 1K. Yeah, 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 yeah. Knowledge born. Yeah. 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 Now it's going to lie. Y'all see it, it is going down. Press back from the eight. You understand what I'm saying? And we got a, a wizard. We got a lyrical mastermind. We got a versatile palette of style switching, flow patterns, cadence is crazy. Visuals is even crazier. Took me on a ride. You understand what I'm saying? And, you know, coming up, we come from the you know, put me on culture. You see what I'm saying? So we got a, we got a man here that does it all. You see what I'm saying? He put the producers on. He he put the the artists on. He put the vocalists on and put it all together. And you got a nice, 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 you know, fresh meal together. You see what I'm saying? So let's get into his story, man. Let's welcome the man, the myth, the legend, the multi-talented mastermind from that yay area. Yes, sir. John Brooks in the building, man. Welcome to the platform. How you doing, brother? What's going on, man? Hey, man. Appreciate it, brother. Appreciate it. I always love people that come from the culture, bro, that come from the culture, that knows the fundamentals, the basics, you know, the work you got to put in, the craft you got to build, man. Those kind of people I appreciate, brother. Definitely. Definitely glad to have you on, man. Shout out to Jeff, man. BTP Music Group, man, is going down. You see what I'm saying? So you out there in the yay. You know, how yeah. how how deep is the shadow that's cast between too short and 40? You see what I'm saying? And in the whole movement. Like where do you come in? What's your circle? What's your introduction? You know, into MCing and what that sound sound like for you. Man, the it's just like I look at it like Avengers, man. Uh, E40 and Too Short is Iron Man and Thor, brother. You know what I'm saying? And I, I'm just, I'm, 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 I'm Falcon. You know what I mean? I'm just happy to be here, brother. You know, uh, we, we give respect where it's due. Um, the the foundation that they were able to lay down in the Bay Area. You know, us being the area that's often uh, pillaged and took and taken from, looked over by the labels and whatnot. Um, the shadow is big, bro. The shadow was big. So as you can see, when they put on a video, when they put on an event, we pull up, man. You know, we, we all, um, us guys on, on, on the bottom front line, we all gladiators, man, just trying to throw them words around and 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 get seen by the greats, man. Uh, I, I'm just uh, blessed and uh, excited to be able to contribute to my area as far as music, man, and just – uh, be able to interact directly with Mr. Fab, dog. That's literally like our Nipsey hustle of the Bay, bro. Like, dude is, is right there. And just looking at him, you see 
he's literally connected to all the greats. So just a conversation with him is kind of like you getting that energy from those guys. You know what I mean? So, yeah, you just mentioned Mr. Fab and you just slid that by like nothing. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> Cat growing up on, on, on that, you know, on the West Coast music. I'm, I'm from the East Coast, yes. but you couldn't tell me I wasn't from the West Coast. He, he said, Facts, saying, so bro. Whether it was LA or it was Oakland, it was going down. So these All were the pictures time. that were painted over time. And even between LA and the Bay, there's a different sound. You see what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Like, there's a different sound. You, you, you could think, it, it might as well be two different continents. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, facts. And it, it's facts. in the same state. So, mm -hmm. you know, what were some differentiating factors that you found, you see what I'm saying, coming up, listening to music of all types? You see what I'm saying? And then how did that help you develop your, your particular sound? So with me, my fundamentals was basically uh, East Coast driven. I'm from the West Coast, and that's ironic you say that. My my fundamentals were East Coast driven. You know, my cousins were listening to the Logs. They were listening to Jay Z, Nas, Most Def. You know what I mean? They put me on to MCs like that, and they're putting in my head. It's about the lyrics. Listen to the lyrics. Listen to the lyrics. As a young as a young cat, I'm not knowing what the hell lyrics is. I'm just feeling the beat. But as I'm able to articulate and process and digest these lyrics. Uh, you grow an appreciation for uh, for the wordplay. You know, uh, I think the first um, time I actually felt like I can do it is when I heard Hyro. You know, and I'm listening to these guys spit. I'm just like, damn, they from the Bay? Like, I never heard Bay guys spit this way. You're used to the greats. You're used to 40, you know, all these other guys. And once I heard Hyro, I was just like, dog. Like, I was super young at the time anyway, but just the fact that they were able to spit at this level blew me away, man. And uh, as far as L.A., you know, off top, Snoop. Snoop is, uh, is most of our introduction to L.A. music as far as my age range. Um, seeing him on TV, wanted to be just like the dog, bro. Wanted to be just like him, bro. And then the game really got fucked up when Bow Wow came out, bro. I don't give a fuck what nobody said about Bow Wow. Everybody wanted to be Bow Wow my age group when they was little. Wanted braids. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Wanted to dance, the clothes, the Air Forces, like so. The the L.A. Uh, vibe was very chill. I Man, you see how Snoop moves, very chill compared to the you know the Bay Area vibe, which is very lit, very hyphy, very live. And um, I'm blessed to be able to receive both ends of that. So we talking like we going from keep. Keep the sneaking Mac Dre to corrupt and dads. You see what I'm yes, saying? Sir. You yes, see, sir. You see the, the palette. You see what I'm saying? So you talk yes, about sir. Compton's most wanted over here to uh, Marvelous and Sebo and Killer Tay. And you see what I'm saying? Like everybody over here. Like this, like this is a definitive kind of adaptable switch in between. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? So it's real versatile. So Maybe you might have caught short on on the East Coast on album nine, ten, or eleven, or forty. The same way you see what I'm saying, like so you might you might have got you know Captain Saber. You see what I'm saying, but you ain't get yeah. you know One Love. You ain't get Carlos Rossi. You said you ain't get it yet. So it's Bro. still like you can catch up. You see what I'm this saying? This is what fuck, this up. is what fucked me up too. This is what this is what fucked me up. I'm you. I'm hearing. I'm hearing the podcast. Hearing the biggest. Hearing this. Shit, I'm hearing all this shit. What mm -hmm. fucked me up when I was coming up was Outcast, bro. <laughs> Mind blown, bro. Blown, bro. I'm just like, dude, like the rhyme patterns. Even to this day, bro. Big boy and and, and Dre, bro. Just the rhyme schemes of how they weave in and out of pocket. The, the lyrics and the picture that Dre paints, like, bro, that blew my mind. So I was just obsessed with lyrics, man. I was obsessed with it, lyrics and energy, man. I was able to to find a uh, a formula that works for me, coming into my own, you know what I mean, uh, in and out of different groups, street legal, Cali soldiers, man, just putting that uh, artist development in ourselves and able to hone the craft I have now. So what led to your shot? You see what I'm saying? 
we put it all together. You, you, you was moving off the muscle. You see what I'm saying? Out there getting yeah. it, wrong, wiggling, you know, making some things happen. So what was mm -hmm. that, you know, that time in, like, bone? I'm, I'm with it, I man. Think, I think uh, I, was, I was in a group called Street Legal with my brothers, uh, Riccolati, Mabalati Riccolati, and Lavelle Crumby, uh, and Gustavo. It was four of us, man. And we did our first show at a Juneteenth in West Oakland. And uh, Mr. Fab happened to be throwing the event. You know, this is at the brand new Mr. Fab. Yellow bus on, you know, on the radio, you know, everywhere. And we were, like, excited, you know what I'm saying? And performed that show, man, the rocking it. Uh, shortly after that, we seen the energy. We was like, bro, we can do this, dog. We can do this. We started to make music, man. We ended up landing a song on a radio uh, called Gonna Get You There, one of those local little slots. And from that moment, bro, like literally, we was just like nonstop, bro, nonstop. Shortly after that, I ended up signing a deal with Universal in a group called Cali Soldiers when I was like 16 or whatever. And that was that was my shot, man. That was that was where that was where this path started. So early in the in the game, in the business, you know, what was it like then? Versus now, as far as you, you know what I'm, I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna keep it real, bro. A lot of my buddies ask me this, you know. Um, I, I'm grateful that I was able to experience that uh, lifestyle at a young age, bro. A young, I was 16, 16 to 18. I was signed to Universal, and I'm so glad I was able to experience that lifestyle under the guidance of my mom, you know, who's still my guardian, who had to make sure I wasn't out here going crazy or whatever. But to ask your question, that is everything you think it is. Everything you think it is, it was. Everything you think is not, it was. It was like the most intoxicating, um, unrealistic fantasy world like ever, bro. Like you'll go to a venue, it's shut down. You go to a club, it's shut down. You go to um, a, a night out in front of the line, you know, VIP, you bottles. It's, it's super just like, just unrealistic. Just It's not real life, you know what I mean? And I was just lucky I was able to experience that young. So, you know, it's out of my system. I'm used to it. I'm not, uh, at this age, I'm not uh, glamorizing that lifestyle, man. I don't, you know, I didn't seen it, you know. Been there, done that, huh? Oh, yeah, you know. And that's amazing because that's where, you know, cats really OD. You see what I'm saying? They really OD. You, you see them, you know, they 30. They might as well be 80 years old. Out here. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Shit, like, or 30 or might as well be 17. <laughs> right. Right. One of the other. Man. Yeah. You know? So... What would you say was your saving grace, you know, that, that that kept you out of the the pitfalls? And what's some of the pitfalls for cats who listening? They might be like, yo, I'm I'm I don't care. I'm just trying to get it. Where would that it's, lead them? It's it's a double-edged sword. It's a double-edged mm -hmm. sword. I think my pitfall and what saved me was the fact that we ended up getting dropped from the label due to uh our management team. You know, we had a, a guy from the hood managing us and fucked the money off and, you know, didn't have the budget to promote the album the way he should. He was trying to recoup all the money he put into it, not really thinking, you know, about, you know, the future. Just thinking about, I need the money I put back into this. You know what I'm saying? And in doing that, he kind of crippled us. Uh, so the project got shelved. I mean, I, I literally have the project probably in my damn garage somewhere inside of a box. A bunch of copies unwrapped, <laughs> just just sitting there. You know what I mean? But I think what, what happened was me getting dropped from that situation, we had no creativity in that situation, bro. This was in the middle of the hyphy area. We literally couldn't write about anything but hyphy. If it wasn't hyphy, they didn't want to hear it. So for me, it was no room to grow. There was no growth there, you know, at least not natural. You know, we're, we're making this music for these white execs and they want to just hear, yo, dumb, talk about shooting people, like just crazy shit. It was just like, obviously I'm 16, so I'm shooting everybody my damn lyrics. You know what I'm saying? I'm selling all kinds of drugs, shooting all kinds of people, you know, but 
it was unrealistic. And I think what saved me was being dropped and having to come back to the basic of my art. That and the plus side is me actually learning uh, uh, not in business entirely because I'm still learning that to this day. But just as far as the, the, the basic concepts of what needs to be done to move a project forward. Here I'm in, here I am independent, five projects in, collecting royalties, collecting royalties for merch. You know what I mean? Like I'm understanding what I need to do to create revenue for myself. You know, it's not it's not millions or thousands of dollars, but you know, I could pay bills. <laughs> So what was the hyphen like? What was that movement like? We we got the shock waves. The shock waves was heard all yeah. around the world. You see what I'm saying? So, you know, what was it like there, bro? Yeah. The hyphy movement and its prime. I'm not even gonna say in its prime because back in the day they was doing it, but when we got introduced to it, it was the best thing in the goddamn world, bro. I mean, you out there, thousands of people. Side showing, they swinging the cars. We would hit up international all the time, chasing, chasing the, chasing the cars, trying to see where they finna stop at. As soon as they stop, everybody outside, cars pulling up. It was just, uh, it was like a festival, man. Almost like uh, tribal. It was tribal. You got black people, you got white people, you got Mexicans. Everybody who with the culture, everybody who from the bay, you know, out there just doing the same dances, the same stuff, the same way. It was. The the only word I can describe it as is tribal. And that's the merch right there. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, yeah man. And, and um, obviously, you know, you know how it go when, when a bunch of people get together and some shit go left. But other than the left part, awesome, bro. Awesome. Like, some people still try to relive it and, and, and bring it back. But I think that was just the time that we can actually just sit back and look back on and just appreciate it from a distance. And that's what I got on right now. The merch, official John Brooks. So how important was in incorporating, you know, your brand? You know, you already got your brand as an artist. You know, when did it transfer into your brand as, you know, an entrepreneur, you know, in these ventures right here? So I didn't start to get brand savvy until I got with uh, a company called Steadfaster Media. That's my home company right there. Uh, it's a media boutique. Um, when I got with him, he's an entrepreneur. That's all he does is, is shoot videos and do work for different contracts, Google, LinkedIn, uh, Instagram, Netflix, you name it. He worked with these guys. Um, once I got with him, he started to really hone in on who John Brooks is. Cause before I went by Jay Dutch, you know, and that was my, my childhood name that I used as a rapper until a teenager. And when I got with him, he, he really honed in on who John Brooks was. And uh, we just been building on it, man. It's been like a five year process. And I think on the fifth year, we kind of just really realized and came to terms of who I am as an artist and as a person. Because I'm the type of artist that, like, my art reflects my life, you know. I don't talk about anything that's um, fabricated. I'm normally just talking about life and love, dog, like, to be honest. And um, other than your typical, you know, competitive MCing. Um, and that's the, the logo came for, you know, official John Brooks. I ended up getting it made in uh, Indonesia from an artist out in Indonesia, man. Hooked it up for me. Uh, man, just been going going strong ever since, man. Out of where? Indonesia. So <laughs> let me tell you the story. So I'm on I'm on IG. Everything's through IG. IG is the new fucking right. You know, hub for everything for graphics, for beats, for everything. So I'm on IG looking for graphic designer, and I'm paying these guys, and these guys running off with the money, bro. I'm paying these guys from America. They taking the dough, and not returning no art. It happened to me about twice, and I was like, oh, yeah, I'm not about to do this shit no more. So I just started looking, like, literally hashtagging and finding links from artists out of the, out of the country. So I'm like, you know what? I'm going to take a chance. Fuck it. So my boy, he was like, bro, don't do it. I said, no, I'm about to do it. I don't give a fuck. Boom. Did it. 
They sent me the logo back, bro. They, I done bought shit. Six logos from them ever since. And it's a shame that I have to literally go out of the country to get honest service from people. You know what I mean? That's real. I just wanted the little yeah. visual to be playing in the background, man. Walk us to what we see and right before we hear it. Yeah, man. This is my joint, man. It's called Hot Life Usabi. It's on my uh, album called Human. Uh, we shot this video out in uh, Sassoon? Yes, yeah, Sassoon. You know, uh, Timbu, my videographer, he loves to get and capture the essence of different cities. Like, if you look at this, you'll think it was in, like, Denver or some shit. But we go to literally the most uh, visually stunning place we can find in the part of a town that we just create, bro. So what does the growth look like from you as an artist, you know, looking to find your way? This gets dropped in your lap at 16 to now. And what's some of them key lessons that you learned? So for me, when I was a young man, you know, early, early, early 20s, late teens, I wanted gold chains, diamond teeth. I wanted the whips. I wanted the women. I wanted the cash. I wanted a million dollars. You know what I mean? To me, that seemed unattainable. It seemed like it was impossible, you know, me wanting these things because I was putting myself in positions to rely on people to put me in positions. And now as an adult, as a 30 some year old man, a million dollars in what I'm doing is a lot more realistic. The reason why I say that is because I have different revenue streams. The amount of money I make is determined on how much I hustle to get it. Now, I work a day job as well. I have a great career. I don't need to do music literally at all. Like with my job, I take my family on three vacations a year before COVID. So I'm not hurting for money. But through music, me reaching a million dollars now is much more realistic than it was when I was signed to Universal. And I think what I learned was I can't depend on people to see my vision and to help me see it through. I have to create my vision to see my vision through, you know, and I'm able to do that at Steadfaster. You know, these are the guys that shoot all of our videos. You know, I'm able, I'm able to do that there. I'm able to, uh, I also design my own merch. I'm able to design my merch. I'm able to, um, you know, pick my beats, put my own music out, collect 100% of my royalties, all my masters, you know, get residual royalties from each project I have out. You know, I have five projects out. I have royalties come. Like I said, it's not, it's not thousands of dollars, but, you know, if I can keep building on this, a million dollars is not that far off. And this is the latest video. This We just shot this one. This is called uh, Good Thing. This is uh, another uh, artist on the label. His name is Jay Voice. You guys got to check this out. This is, this is called... We shot this in Vallejo, man. Out in Vallejo. Yeah. <laughs> Featuring Tierra. You know, the homie, man. She came through and blessed us one time. One time for the one time. Mm hmm Yeah, these visuals is crazy. It's art is missing. So when you made yeah. a reference to your art in this art form. I know that you had a sacred space in this particular culture because it's still an art, you know? Mm -hmm. It's a science right. to it, but it's an art. And art is subjective. So yes, with that, you know that everybody's not going to like your paintbrush stroke. Oh, of course. Of <laughs> you course. see what I'm saying? So, yes, sir. you know, you, found, you find a way to diversify and find something that everybody is going to like. It may not be the song. It might be the merch. It might be the song and the merch. Then it might be the mm -hmm. visual. You see what I'm saying? Everything that, that gets created out of that content. You know, you got a foundation, and your foundation will take you to the capstone. The capstone and the foundation don't look the same. 
Because nope. the vantage That's... point is the same. You know, they say <laughs> we facts? built from the the bottom up. But that's not true. We built from the top down. Mm. You see what I'm saying? So yeah, I got you, bro. When, when you eliminate that, you begin to understand. Like, okay, I'm building this from the top down. You see what I'm saying? It, yeah. If and, you look at was... a child coming into existence, it's, a child is built from the top down. The first thing is formed in the, in the child's you know, gestation period is the head. You see what I'm yep. saying? So from the head down. You see? And, so and that's is, and that's right. and that's that's something I had to learn as well. It goes back to the point you just said. Not everybody is going to like your music. Coming mm -hmm. up before I before I was able to master that kind of thought, I would get offended if someone said, "Oh, your music is ass. I don't like it." I would get offended. I'm ready to fight, bro. What you mean, bro? What you talking about? But now it's like, like it's subjective. This I make art literally. I can give two fucks if somebody don't like my music. I literally get paid to create. And, you know, I don't focus on the people who don't like it. You know, cool. You don't like it. Great. You know, I'm glad you watched it. I'm sorry you don't like it. You know, but the people who love it, that's who I, you know, hone in on. And you grab those people. You embrace them, man. You cherish them. You know what I mean? So we, we, we about a year into this thing. You know, uh, what did 2020... You know, in 2021, now coming into being, you know, with these other, you know, instances that come by, you know, how has it affected you and your family? My family? Um, so for, for my family, it affected us uh, a little bit, you know. We mostly homebodies, bro. Me, my wife, and my son, we're mostly homebodies, bro. We don't really go nowhere unless we go on a vacation. You know what I'm saying? Other than that, it's just took away vacations. But that's a luxury, you know, that everybody don't get the uh, privilege to go on vacation, you know. So we, we just took that and just sat on that. But as far as my creativity and my music, bro, I actually feel like – I feel like an asshole saying this, but I feel like COVID gave me an advantage – you know, like it literally tripled my numbers as far as my merch sales, the videos, productivity of making videos, me writing, us creating. Like, like I, I, it enhanced everything we were doing. So, you know, COVID was kind of like a double-edged sword in that aspect. But other than that, you know, I work for public transit, so I, you know, business as usual for me. I mean that's what's up. It, it mm -hmm. sounded like we had a similar similar year. You know, I took on <laughs> some additional responsibilities yeah. in my community. You know, and mm -hmm. people coming together and you know taking care of you, taking care of elders, you know, taking care nice. of you know battered women, you know things like that. And now like focusing on all of that, and then the homeless population. You know, mm. All of these things that's all dope. together. And you know, still doing you know this right here. You see what I'm saying? So I'm looking at yeah, you. you and, yeah, and I looked at Razcast. You see what I'm saying? I looked at you know, yeah. shout out to Jeff, man. I looked at Shan. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Like so, yeah. these opportunities. You see what I'm saying? That wouldn't have happened because everybody was in, you know, the rigmarole. Everybody was out there getting flying in, flying out, flying in, flying out, driving in, driving out, driving in, driving out. So with the slowing down of the planet and the restrictions of movement, you were able to see in the most cases what was most important. You see what I'm saying? Mm. So for you, mm -hmm. if you're already a homebody, you know, your family is already important. You see what I'm saying? So oh, for, for sure. other people, it was a re-education. Like, oh man, I got right. <laughs> They got schoolwork, they got homework. I got you understand what I'm saying? Like you right, bro. <laughs> like, shell shot. So shell all of shot. these things together. So you you there, like y'all be learning each other and all kind of stuff. Like, oh man, I don't really fuck with you like that. Like, oh, I don't really fuck with you like that. And we stuck here. Like, oh, we gotta figure this out. You, what you know, saying? you know so, what? You know what I noticed? Not to cut you off, bro. My bad, bro. Um, I was time having a conversation with my grandpa. He's 80 years old, man. Like blessed. I was, I'm blessed. Like, I, like I, 
I, I'm not going to say I hate, but I, I still feel uncomfortable talking about my life coming up because it's almost like survivor's remorse. I have a, a, a just a blessed life, bro. Blessed, you know. No way, shape, or form was I raised with a silver spoon or whatnot, but just I've been doing a lot of reflecting now. I was raised with my grandparents, bro. My grandmother, my grandfather, my mother, my dad. Moms and pops wasn't together, but my grandparents were, man. That foundation from two generations removed is a different kind of fucking cement, bro. You know what I'm saying? So I, 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 I'm I, still getting used to talking about that aspect of it because I know it's, 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 a, it's a luxury that not all of us have. You know what I'm saying? But I was talking to my grandfather, and we were talking about um, – Raising children, being married, um, you know, just just G shit. And he said something that shook me. He was looking at me and my wife. He was looking at my son and my son's the fourth generation Brooks. Right. So he was just like. He said out of nowhere, I feel sorry for people who are I feel bad, like bad for my heart aches for people who are single. Who do who have to do this by them, by themselves, and then it made me reflect on during this pandemic how I had my wife, how I leaned on her. You know, I go to work, she take care of the house. It sounds simple. It sounds something that sounds like something that's very simple. Like yes, yeah, you know, she goes, you go to work, she take care of the house. But think about that in this day and age. The I'm going to work while she's home taking care of the house during a pandemic that's one of the worst that we've ever seen. And this is my foundation. Like, to me, I felt like I had no room to complain. There's no there's no way in hell I can utter a complaint out of my motherfucking mouth when there are single fucking people like my mother, you know, raising a house full of fucking children or single men Raising a house full of children who have to do this shit by themselves, go to work, no one to lean on. I couldn't, I couldn't picture that, bro. It's just a different appreciation. So to your point, I feel like COVID made me and my wife's relationship that much stronger. Yeah, that's 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 love right there. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like it's it's a lot going on out here, and ain't nothing like you know being able. To have somebody that's in your corner that's gonna ride with you, you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying, and ride for you, and and you know us as men we got sight, you know the women, you know they got vision, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying, they got vision. So if they with you, they see something in you, they see something in us that we don't see in ourselves yet. We might nice. be getting acquainted with it, but they got that, you know. I don't know if you remember the Thundercats, you know, cartoon talking, back man. in the day. Hell yeah. you see what you know, yeah. sight beyond sight. They got they, uh-huh. they're visionary. You see what I'm saying? So they got that sight beyond sight. You know, they they're there with it naturally. We gotta do stuff to to enhance it and all that. They they're naturally on both sides. They they are they are responsible for what's coming into being. Facts cultivating it in their womb, in their body. Facts. They make space in their body for what's coming in from the other side. They're the you portals. see what I'm saying? They're the portal. So from one side to the other. So yeah, that's just it's interesting, you know. And you know they accept us with all our bullshit. You see what I'm saying? And because <laughs> men, you know what men are, bro. You know what men are like to me. And this, this just is my my POV. I feel like men are like literally walking puzzle pieces, man. You know, I feel like as a child, you know. As we grow, we require more pieces of the puzzle, you know, and there are certain pieces of the puzzle that your parents can't give you. You know, there are only pieces of the puzzle that the opposite sex can give you. You know what I'm saying? Your wife can give you your relationships along the way can give you or take away, you know, and then when you when you connect with the right person, I always tell my wife this. We are in this relationship, in this marriage, 50-50, right? 
I'm 50% full, you're 50% full. When we come together, we're 100% full. So, and that's how it's supposed to be. When you when you need a piece, I'll give you a piece. When I need a piece, you give me a piece. We exchange and we rearrange. But to your point, men are more so like puzzles because they have to build us. My wife had to build me up, bro. For me to have this kind of emotional um, integrity, emotional maturity, my wife had to build me. Bro. I was bro, like, I was a man. Come on, you know. I she right. had to put work in, bro. If we got a divorce, <laughs> if we got a divorce today, ladies will think I'm a goddamn god. Who? Where did you come from? Who? How did you, bro? When you marry, it's a different kind of game, bro. Vice versa, vice versa. She gets single, man. I'm like, what the fuck you been at? You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just she had to build, bro. You know, we got. I gotta give credit with this dude, bro. Why we had to build on this, bro? And we learn. I learn. You know. It comes through. It comes through in the music. It comes through in your mindset. You see what I'm saying? Like you seen your mother do it. You seen your mother go through it. Facts. So, you had to put yourself in a position to be able to provide. You see what I'm saying? So now you could be in a you know a situation to where it's a shared responsibility in regards to contribution, not mm -hmm. you know from one standpoint or another. You know it's a spiritual upliftment. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That's there that comes from. You know these engagements when you look at it, but if you're only looking at it from your jaded view or perspective, you, can't it all. you see what I'm saying? And you'll be right there looking time. at your stuff like, damn, son, like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, a fact, so. and that's the problem with most of us, man. We we were comfortable looking through that that jaded perspective, man. You know, I was there at one point. You know, um, I was there. I'm guilty of it. I'm not perfect. You know, and nobody's perfect. You know what I mean? It's just like you said, the willingness to build and learn from it. You know, uh, moms, yeah, moms taught me survival. Moms taught me how to take care of something. Well, I could hold a motherfucking house down with a weight, brother. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. uh, um, you know, the I feel like one of the um, benefits of not having a father in the house when you have a mother who's actually providing, ain't no I don't give a fuck what nobody say about uh, women. There's no better provider for a household when a woman's doing it on point, then a motherfucking woman going to school, two jobs, she providing, bro. She's showing you how to survive. The survival technique of that uh, interaction. Obviously, you need a father for the household. I'm not saying you don't, but that survival from a woman, bro. That's that's a different kind of course. Mom's taught me how to survive, big dog. You know what I mean? And then the other aspect, when you in a position to do where your queen can stay at home and maintain how much peaceful is the house going to be you see what i'm saying how, how righteous is going to be you know walking into that experience like i now i, I must, think now i'm gonna say you see like, <laughs> <laughs> everybody don't have it you see what i'm saying so when you have a position boom you there like you, you can fight all of the hell in the world out there you ain't gonna bring any of that in the house because you already know where this place is it's your sanctuary you see what I'm saying? It's your fortress of solitude. So it's not how it go. Facts. So what's next? What's next, man? What's next that you can share with us? You know what I'm saying? What's, what we need to be on the lookout for? Man, I'm actually working on uh, a project right now with the artist, uh, my, my label mate, uh, Jay Voice, man. It's called Hugh. So we're, we're working on this album, man. We're about, what, 80% done. We just need to finish up a couple of more joints and... Uh, you know, some some more songs or whatnot. But other than that, I you should that should be out within the next uh the next three months for sure. But yeah, just just knocking out that album, man, and uh just releasing visuals, brother. That's it. You know, I'm at a point where we're able to create freely, man, and I love it, you know. I'm loving it. That's real, man. J voice, man. J J voice is a problem out here. <laughs> look, look, this man just went viral on TikTok. It's a rap. Mm. It's a rap. Mm. Official, official uh I welcome him. But you a, you a sex symbol now, boy. <laughs> <laughs> well, I saw them comments. I said, you a sex symbol now, boy. You better get it. Yeah, yeah. Mm. He uh he getting it, bro. This guy is bro. Look, this man is a is a I don't know how many threats. 
This man writes, makes his own beats, mixes his masters his own shit, like sings his own vocals, harmonizes, does every fucking like it's it's just incredible. He a cheat code. He a walking cheat code, bro. That's real. Yeah, that's real. In in a time when ain't nobody singing about love, you don't you don't he don't got no competition. He, you know what I'm he ain't got no competition. You know, look, you need me to tell him, I, look, Jay Voice, you ain't got no competition, man. They're, now, they're not look. looking for that. Like, the, the stuff no. that the children that's walking around that might be in their 20s now was made off of was 90s R&B. You understand what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> we was made off that's, 70s R&B. They was made off of 90s R&B, man. I'm telling bro, you. Like, the, the level of response we're getting right now from JV yeah, is, is yeah. not fair, bro. It's not fair. <laughs> women. It's women. It's just, I don't I don't know right. not one. So you're the first man to come out and say it. Everybody else been kind of reluctant to say it. We know. But you know the guys, you know different radio hosts. Oh, nigga, they ain't about to try to hear this shit. You ain't trying to hear this shit. I got right. five thousand women talking about they like it, big dog. So hey, right. <laughs> we but it brings me back to the point. People say, "Oh, R and B's dead." No, it's not dead. You just ain't doing it. Adele's fucking doing it. Justin Timberlake's fucking doing it. Like it's still there, bro. It may not be that. It may not be that Chris Brown or fucking Ty Dolla Sign money. You won't. But this shit is longevity money. That Bruno Mars money, big dog. Trust me. Definitely. And especially when you get a sample of it and then you put it together and then, you know, your versatile style, his versatile style coming together. You know, we seen Jay and Kels were supposed to do it. Yes. Right? They were supposed yes. to do it and it was crazy. It was crazy. I know now you can't talk about cows and all that old shit now, <laughs> but that was it. That was it. It was. And, it was. And this is what it was. Like there was an ushering in where this was all together. So whether it was Fuba and Mary, you see what I'm saying? Smith and Wesson yeah. and Mary, whatever it yeah. was, whether it was Jai, you know what I'm saying? And Mary, like it, it's there. It's it was Wu Tang and SWV. You're like, what the fuck Pe was that? Pe it's not Hill, right? You see what Peanut I'm saying? Like jelly, it's, bro. it's supposed to be there. It's supposed to be yeah. like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like that's you know, like that's how it's supposed to be. Like it's really like that. So you were waiting for it, and now you don't. You know, you don't hear it no more. Mm. Az and D'Angelo. You understand? Like, come on, man. Like Boy, it, it was there. Boy. God damn, we rolled out. You see out. what I'm saying? Yeah. So this is the alchemy where it comes. So y'all both have that opportunity in your lap coming together and, and doing it. You could do something that is a reminder of everything that came before it, but it, it's still yours. Signature. Yes, sir. It's you, it's him. You see what I'm saying? It's all that all yes, together. Sir. You know what it feel like. You know what it sound like. You ain't got to send that shit nowhere. Nope. You y'all a cheat code. You talking about he a cheat code? Y'all a fucking cheat code <laughs> together. You know what I'm You better put yourself in some of that cheat. Okay. Uh, so hey, look, that, we always yeah. we always say that it, it ain't about reinventing the wheel. I don't want to reinvent the wheel. I want to make that bitch go further. That's all we doing. Right. Right. Because uh -huh. no matter what they had to say about cows, they had that TP too. They had that twelve foot. They had all that shit. You understand what I'm saying? I'm so, tell you, bro. Life was created from there, not just dances. <laughs> okay. Look, look, man. Look, Siblings. I'm trying to tell you, bro. And it, and it, like you said, you just drop that shit out there, and they, they love it. The women love it, bro. It's like, and this is our first time actually, like, working with an R&B singer. It's just like, dude, like, this shit is manny, bro. <laughs> uh. You know what they said on Friday? I don't think you apply yourself, Smokey. Smokey. You know what I'm saying? What he was applying, Smokey. Right. You know, so yeah, you definitely got it. You definitely got it, man. That was y'all got you know you you not one dimensional with your style. He not one dimensional with his approach. You know, it's a plethora of things to talk about. He, that's more into a line where you can show the range of how you live. You see what I'm saying? Facts. And you know, Facts, example man. to your son. You know what I mean? Like, like I know it might be hard pressed to find out here with these 
you know, social media stuff and all that. Like, you know, your mind get inundated with all of this separation, man. But it's really love out here. I just told is, you we man. went from groups, like from the youth to the elders to these women to the homeless. Mm. You see what I'm saying? I'm like, mm. man, I don't know who y'all think I am out here, but, you know, they, they coming, though. You see what I'm saying? They're okay. coming. So it's like when you charge with something, you know, when the creator puts something on your heart, there's a way to come after it if you're willing to do it. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So when the creator right. puts this on in your heart to do and, and place these you know, opportunities in your life, if you're there to walk with it, don't walk with it. You might be pulling your hair out sometimes. Like, I don't even know how. And boom. Well, how am I supposed to? Boom. Then you go. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? So it's all there. All these guys are working, man. So, you know, Real let talk. the fam know where to find you, man. You got a final message for, for those who are out here in whatever walk they in, you know, whether it's entrepreneur, whatever it is. You see what I'm saying? Give you lace them up, man, before we go, man. Give them some of that. Yeah, game man. Up. So so you guys can follow me at official John Brooks on Instagram. Uh, my link is in the bio, man. That, that's where I'm at. Uh, shout these guys out, man. Do it on radio, man. Shout out Jeff, BTB uh, uh, Media, man, Production Media. Uh, look, anybody who out there who want to get into music, who want to get into being a creative or an influencer, do it, man. Do it. Don't wait on nobody. Don't take unsound advice. You know what I'm saying? If it feels right inside here and it's in you, do it, man. Pack up your damn shoes. Fail along the way. Fail as much as you fucking can. Fail till you can't fail no more. Because when you can't fail no more, you have success, big dog. That's it. Appreciate you coming through, man. Lacing it up with some jewels, man. Don't be a stranger, man. Break J Boyce with you, man. You know what I'm saying? Let's, Brother, let's, look, let's bro, do say it. Say the man. word, bro. Say the word. I hey. got him, man. You know, he'll pull up for show for show. And thank you for having me, bro. I appreciate it. My dog going ham in the background. But thank you for having me, bro. I appreciate it. <laughs> so good, man. Enjoy the rest of your night over there. You yes, sir. You too. Some time over here. All right. Oh, you. Yeah. One love. All right, great. Shout out to Jeff, man, BTP, man, in, in the building, man. Amazing, amazing opportunities coming to get real stories from real people, man. So wherever you're listening to, make sure you go to www.youtube.com forward slash do now is radio like the shirt say D O T H A K N O W L E D G E R A D I O. Shout out to my big bro, DJ Rich Williams, who's in the building tonight, man. Fam, listening in. My real brother in real life. You understand? Ain't nothing like having the fam support you. So, if you're looking for a spotlight, looking for a paid interview slot, you want to help with these initiatives we got going on in the community. You know, hit me up on radio.com. Follow the show on Instagram. Both our pages. And now it's one on our 357 on Instagram and our business page, Do Knowledge Radio. Check out our website, hub site, e commerce site, www.donowledgeradio.com, and also www.dtk. Empower you. And for now, we out. Yeah, yeah. Now we gonna tell them. That in front. We tell them like this, yo. I'm an African. I'm a, I'm an African. I'm an African. I'm a, I'm an African. Yeah, y'all like that. No more. This man mind is open. I'm an African. I'm a, I'm an African. I'm an African. I'm a, I'm a. And that motive is best developed by recognizing the common enemy.